Hello guys, um, welcome to this um, special episode of Solution Architecture. And uh, today I want to cover how to become a solution architect. So I have done this presentation in about three user group. Um, there's a lot of people still asking me about my journey. So when I um, made the transition from a geeky developer to a solution architect, there's a lot of training or books around uh, technical details around what sort of things you need to learn or what sort of certification you need to do in order to become a solution architect. However, what I find is um, there's not a lot of people talk about their journey and there's not a lot of people talk about on the emotion side around um, transitioning from a geeky developer to a solution architect. Um, so today I want to fill in the gap um, to share my journey, share my learning, share my mistakes, and hopefully it will sort of uh, give you a complete picture around how you can uh, transition from a geeky developer or maybe a IT professional in general to become a solution architect. As you can see from my screen, you can uh, add me um, in LinkedIn. Um, if you got any questions or if you got anything that you are not quite sure, you can join us in our Facebook group. Uh, you can also uh, listen to my previous uh, podcast as was also on that link. Okay, let's get started. Um, so basically, this is me. Um, I'm living in New Zealand. So I became a full-time solution architect about three years ago. Um, I find that journey of the transition from a uh, sort of geeky developer to that solution architect very challenging. And um, uh, through reading books, um, going to uh, find mentors and going through different learnings, um, I made it through. I find um, it is much more comfortable. I start to enjoy the role. Um, I hope if you sort of want to become a solution architect or you sort of just become an architect and you um, sort of not quite sure what you're doing and you feel a, a bit of overwhelming or um, get a little bit stressed, I hope this sort of um, this sort of journey, uh, sharing my journey, uh, will help you to get through. Um, so today's agenda would be, I'll share why I want to become a solution architect. Um, secondly, uh, what I'll do is, I'll, I'll describe what does solution architect do. Obviously, each company are, are different. Um, the third thing uh, I want to share around how you can become a solution architect. Uh, before I go into the details, I want to ask the audience two questions. The first question I want to ask is, in your current role, what do you think it is the highest paid skills you have? That's the first question. In your current role, what do you think it is the highest paid skills? In the second role, I'd like to ask is, what skills you think uh, it is the highest paid skill in the market? So the second question is, what do you think it is the second, sorry, what do you think it is the highest paid skills in the current market? Okay, let's start our uh, presentation today. So, um, the reason I want to become a solution architect, obviously in New Zealand, uh, I'm sure in Australia and some other countries probably um, also the case, um, the solution architect or IT architect in general are ranked pretty highly in the, in the highest paying jobs, um, especially in the IT industry. Um, and um, I also find that if you've been doing um, for sort of uh, in the sort of technical role as a developer or as an IT professional for about more than five years that you really want to step up. And I find that uh, being a solution architect give you that opportunity to, to explore that, um, that, what sort of options you have. 
Um, and obviously, if just for the money, I probably wouldn't be able to make a successful transition. As you can see, um, being a solution architect uh, is quite challenging. Uh, from just put my headphones on and doing all the programming, um, doing the configuration, um, from to be able to lead in the meeting, be able to articulate ideas and ask questions. Um, for, for a geeky developer, that was very challenging. So why? what is the real reason why I want to become a, um, a solution architect? It's the new skills. Um, so... Um, I have been in the IT industry for about more than 10 years. So what I find is the technical skills I learned in the past becoming obsolete or useless very quickly. Uh, from when I started, uh, when Windows uh, operating system are still sort of a, a, a thing that for you to learn um, the sort of the skills refresh cycle is around every three years so when windows release a new operating system when office release their next version of the office and there's pretty much a lot of new learning uh, around whatever that you, you're trying to do um, when mobile becoming uh, sort of um, a, a a sort of a quite an important factor in the in the IT industry with the iPhone release every year. The skills you you need to learn becoming almost an annual thing. Every year iPhone release a new version. A lot of the skills you have becoming obsolete and use useless. Then you have to pick up and learn new skills. Uh, with the cloud computing, um, the, the new features almost shipped on a daily, on almost hourly basis. And I find that I just couldn't, it's very hard to keep up. It's almost, I haven't even finished an IT project or a development project. Uh, halfway through that project, a lot of the skills I learned becoming useless. So I'm sort of... Um, struggling a bit uh, when I have my my daughter about f sort of five years ago and and I say how can I can make this sort of IT career uh, work so I did ask quite a few uh, my mentors uh, my previous manager or uh, some person that being in this IT game for for some time to see, hey, you guys been in the game for quite a long time tell me how you make this IT career work um, what what I got from um, the mentors is, hey Ben, um, if you really have want to have a, a a long time career in this IT industry, you need to have some skills that is going to um, not going to sort of uh, becoming obsolete very quickly. You need to have some skills that um, the longer. Um, you are in the industry, uh, the more value you become. And obviously, those are not those technical skills. Some of the technical skills um, that potentially would be, but a lot of their new skills that um, required is around uh, more around the, the people side, the communication skills, um, the leadership skills, um, and the problem solving skills. And upon talking to a lot of my mentors, uh, I learned that uh, solution um, solution architect actually offering you a pathway to learn those skills. So, what does solution architect do? So, whenever I explain, uh, whenever I mention my title to a non IT professional. Um, they are always struggling to understand. So what what your job what your role is, and my wife actually studied to become uh, to study architecture, and she often joked around to say, "Hey, Ben, you're not a a real architect. I am. Uh, how come you have architect in your title?" I was struggling a bit to explain to her what what I'm trying to do until um, one day. I can't remember either reading a book or listening to some sort of video. I come up with this sort of explanation. Basically, what does Solution Architect do is we are a professional problem solver. 
So we define the problem. Uh, we talk to different stakeholders to really understand it and to, to define their problem. And then we research all the possible solutions, always engaging with all the stakeholders to try to make sure that we have the right understanding. And then we recommend the best solution possible. So, um, so this is sort of in a very high level what solution architect do. But if you think about it, a lot of the leadership level, like the manager or even into a chief executive level, what they are really trying to do is they trying to solve problem. Right. So the company has issues with a particular area or if they need to increase revenue, fix the culture or um, embrace new challenges at that level, you what they do is they need to solve problem. So solution architect almost becoming a almost a apprentice for people to try to step up to becoming those sort of leadership role. Um, it gives you all the opportunities for you to learn those new skills, to refine all those new skills and to step step up to becoming a um, IT industry leader. So here are some of the key skills required by solution architect. And what I want to make is you can read it. So you obviously need to have a broad technical skills. You need to be an excellent problem solver. You need to be able to be an excellent communicator. You need that you are a technical leader. You have a very good understanding of the business. And what is most important is you are a lifelong learner. You spend a lot of time on personal and professional development. And that's sort of uh, what I want to emphasize on. Um, Suddenly you got a solution architect role doesn't mean you are a competent solution architect. The journey, um, so the, the, the way you becoming a solution architect is journey. So you have to really uh, you enjoy the journey, you enjoy the learning, you enjoy the challenges. And what I also want to um, sort of emphasize on is um, those sort of new skills. Um, what I list is here um, from what different from the technical skills is those skills is is probably uh, um, very challenging for you to learn, especially um, when I coming from a, a Git developer background It's very challenging for me. However, what I want to say is it's worth it because um, when you really learned how you're going to communicate with people and the, the, the skills you can refine it for life, it will, it will change uh, not only in the relationship, um, in your work environment, it will also help you um, in, in the family environment. You'll be able to communicate better with your partner. You'll be communicate better with your kids. You'll be communicate better with all the people around you. And I think it's worth the effort. Um, there are definitely going to be challenges, um, but I think it's worth the effort. Um, another thing I want to emphasize on is you can't just by um, watching a video like this or watching uh, a learning video, going through trainings or read books to learn those skills. Those skills are like learning to riding a bike or uh, learning to swimming you actually need to be having a bicycle um, to ride that bike. You need to be in the water in order to learn the swim. You can't just be um, out of the water to learn all the actions, but when you are in the water, it's different. So you, that's why um, I think is um, for IT professional to choosing um, solution architect as one of the career paths is very good career path because it's the, it's the solution architect role offering all of those opportunities for you to learn the skills, to practice those skills and to refine those skills. So 
Um, here are some of the job advertisement a uh, graph from SIG um, that was in New Zealand. Um, I'm pretty sure that you probably be able to see that if you're in Australia, or in the States, in Canada, you probably be able to find a very similar theme around uh, what is required for that solution architect role. I want you to maybe look at that and see, uh, do a bit of sort of um, um, analysis against you to see where your gap is and you need to be able to um, start finding ways um, to start a journey to to improve some of those skills maybe you're not um, you, maybe you're not really good at presentation or you bit have that fear that you just don't want to talk in front of people um, then um, a Toastmaster would be a very good um, sort of a course for you to go or maybe there's some other course in your country but I do want you to start a journey to understand where your gap is Um, so how you can become a solution architect? As I mentioned previously, um, to become a solution architect, especially if you're coming from a developer background or a um, server admin or IT professional background, then you need to learn new skills. Um, that's a, quite a key. And those new skills, uh, as I mentioned previously, like a swimming, you need to be in it in the water to learn it. So you need to uh, go to those environment, go to an environment that you'll be able to practice those skills, not only by watching videos, not only by reading books. So um, here's what I sort of my journey to um, make the transition uh, from a developer to a solution architect. First, what I did is increase my technology breadth. So I used to um, work as a developer uh, and I also work in the niche uh, Microsoft SharePoint. I did a bit of Salesforce, Microsoft Dynamics CRM. Um, so that's sort of my niche. Uh, but in order to becoming a solution architect, you need to broaden that. So I learned a lot around the um, Active Directory, uh, authentication, OWASP, identity management, IT security, um, how how the uh, network um, sort of uh, network level works, uh, network traffic flow. So you really need to um, having those uh, technology um, sort of breadth of the technology in order for you to come up with all possible solutions. So if you are only um, uh, the expert in Microsoft Azure or Amazon AWS, um, then your solution will be limited to only those technology. I think as a solution architect, you should definitely understand a broad spectrum of what, what is out there in order to come up with all the possible solutions.